Okay, today we're going to briefly talk about piecewise functions, uh, what a piecewise function is, and how to evaluate it given the function or given a graph. Okay. So what a piecewise function is, is it's just it's a single function made up of multiple equations. So a single function made up of multiple equations, and this next part's important, with non-overlapping domains. Why is that non-overlapping domains part important? Because if it had an overlapping domain, okay, and this will make more sense when we see it, the equation and the graph, if it had overlapping domains, it would no longer be a function. Okay, So with the non-overlapping domains, it'll still pass the vertical line test. And therefore, it'd still be a function. Because remember, we could, we're only dealing with functions in algebra. But again, if it still passes the vertical line test, it's still a function. Okay. And otherwise, it wouldn't be a piecewise function. Okay, so how do we evaluate piecewise functions if we're given the function? All right, well, first let's see what a piecewise function setup looks like. Okay. It's still going to be in function notation, so we could call this one f of x. Okay. Then there's usually a big curly bracket. Okay. Because remember, this curly bracket is going to contain multiple equations, as the definition says. Okay, so then there's going to be kind of a tiered level. There's going to be, I'll, we'll put two in this one. Okay, this, so there's going to be two tiers. There's going to be the top tier with the top equation. So let's say the top equation is x minus 10. The bottom equation, let's say, is 2x. Okay, so you have two separate equations, x minus 10 and 2x, but they both create, make up the function f of x. Okay, so how do we know which one to use? Well, that's where the domains come in. So if you have a piecewise function, the domain has to be stated. Usually it's after the equation, after a comma, and then it'll be in some, you know, some inequality. So like x is less than 5. And for 2x, let's say that domain is when x is greater than or equal to 5. Now, usually it'll be written as an inequality. It could also be written in interval notation. Okay. So how do we evaluate this? Okay, so there's two parts to this. You have the equation part and the domain part. Okay. So how do we know which equation? Are we going to use the top equation or the bottom equation? Well, it depends on what the function input is. Okay. So you want to find which domain the input falls into. And then you use that equation. So if your input value was 10, okay, you have two domains there. So you have to figure out is x, so your input is going to be the x part. Is 10 less than 5 or is 10 greater than or equal to 5? Okay. Whichever one is true, you're going to use that equation. Okay. So let's look at some examples. Let's find what f of 3 is. Find f of 10. We'll use the example we said. And then f of 5. Okay. All right, so starting with f of 3. Okay. Our input value is 3. That's our x value. Okay. So go to your domains. Figure out which of these two domains 2 fits into. Which one is true if we plug in 3. Okay. So your two options would be 3 is less than 5 or 3 is greater than or equal to 5. Okay. Obviously, 3 is less than 5, 
So we would use the top equation. Right? So it fits in the top domain, so we're going to use the top equation. So f of 3, use the top equation. Wherever you see, in, see x, you're going to plug in 3. 3 minus 10. f of 3 is negative 7. Write that out. f of 3 equals negative 7. Simple as that. Then it's just evaluating equations like we've done. All right, the next one, f of 10. So go to your two domains and figure out where 10 fits in. 10 is your x value. 10 is your input. So is 10 less than 5 or is 10 greater than or equal to 5? Obviously, it's greater than or equal to 5. So we're going to use the bottom equation. So wherever we see x, we're going to plug in 10. Set it 2 times x, it's going to be 2 times 10, which of course is 20. So f of 10 equals 20. Now look at, we'll go back and look at these domains. x is less than 5 and x is greater than or equal to 5. They both involve 5. Okay. Now remember the definition. The definition said non-overlapping domains. These are non-overlapping because one of them is less than and one is less than or equal to. Okay. So in our last example, when we have f of 5, 5 okay, is our input. So we go to your two domains and figure out which one's true. Is 5 less than 5? Or is 5 greater than or equal to 5? Okay. 5 is not less than 5. 5, in this domain, 5 is not included because it doesn't have the or equal to. It just has the less than. In the second one, x is greater than or equal to 5, so that or equal to includes 5. 5 is included in that one. So on this one, we're going to use the second equation. Okay, It fits the second domain, so we use the second equation, 2x. So f of 5 is going to be 2 times x or 2 times 5 because 5 is our input. So f of 5 equals 10. And that's all evaluating is. Now you could have you could have two things in your, you know, two tiers. You could have three tiers. You could have four tiers. You could have as many equations as you want in your piecewise function as long as none of the domains overlap. Okay, so now we're going to briefly talk about piecewise functions as a graph. Okay, so evaluating piecewise function graphically. Okay, so I drew a piecewise function graph. This is what piecewise functions graph usually look like. It's just a bunch of line segments or rays kind of disjointed, unattached from each other. Okay, now there's a couple things we want to notice. Notice that we have these open and closed circles. Okay, remember when we were doing graphing inequalities on a number line. An open circle means that value didn't count in the solution set while a closed circle meant that value did count in the solution set. Okay. It was the same thing as you know less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, versus less than or greater than. And same thing in interval notation, a bracket versus a parenthesis. So it's the same thing here. The reason these happen is because of the vertical line test. If both of these were filled in circles, that would fail the vertical line test. Okay. So one of them always has to be open if it's you know directly above or below another one. So one's going to be open, one's going to be closed. So what happens is this top one, the red open circle, that value doesn't exist on the graph. It's not a solution. While the lower one, the green closed circle, does exist. So it is a solution to that function. So when we're evaluating from a graph, if you're ever evaluating an input that has two circles on it, you always have to go to the closed one. So for example, let's say we have 
we're trying to find the function, the value, we're going to evaluate f of 4. Okay. Remember, when we're evaluating from graph, if you try and find f of 4, 4 is your input. Okay. So you would go to 4 on the x-axis. Okay. We'll pretend one each grid is 1. So there's 4 on the x-axis. And then you look up and down, find your graph. If there's two circles, you always go to the closed in one. Okay, so the closed circle is right there. Figure out what the y value is at that point. Well, we went up 2. So f of 4 is 2. Okay. There's one other kind of endpoint, I call them. f of negative 3. Okay. f of negative 3 you'd have to go over 3 on the x-axis okay. and then look up and look down. Which one of these are we going to use? Are we going to use the open circle or are we going to use the closed circle? We're always going to pick the closed circle because remember the open circle doesn't really exist. It's always going to be the closed one. So figure out where your graph is at the closed circle. It's up 1, so f of negative 3 is 1. Alright, so that's piecewise functions as a graph. This was piecewise functions from an equation, and all it is is multiple equations. Again, you could have two, three, four with different domains, and those domains never overlap. Okay, so it's either in a, in a graph, it'll be open circle and a closed circle. In a domain equation, it'll be uh, less than or versus greater than or equal to. So one is not going to have that or equal to part.